So my name is Jeff Durbin. I am your last presentation for tonight. Um, lucky Ooh. number 13, as it has it. Um, the <coughs> name of my company is Working Title. Um, it is actually the name. The logo is actually a work in progress, but I did steal a little bit from Mystery Science Theater. Um, working Title is a crowdfinancing solution for, um, for filmmakers. So before we get more into that, I want to touch base on what crowdsourcing is. Are, are, you, are you all familiar with the idea of crowdsourcing? So the idea of crowdsourcing is that no matter what your idea is, no matter how crazy it is, somewhere, somewhere in the world wants to do it too. They may not have the resources, maybe they don't have the time, but uh, the wonderful thing about the internet is it gives you so much access to people all over the world who can help you with those ideas. So, in this particular instance, we're looking for money. Working Title is a crowd financing tool in that you are, it is going to help budding film filmmakers raise funds to create their, uh, create their magic, uh, recreate their dreams, recreate the movies that they want that they see in their head. So, crowdsourcing for financial purposes is a rather new industry. It kind of kicked off a couple of years ago with a company called Kickstarter. Kickstarter is a web-based company that will finance pretty much anything you can think of. They do things from gadgets to music to movies, dance productions, etc. Actually, uh, as I know you're aware, this South by Southwest, which is going on currently, had actually had 33 films funded by Kickstarter which actually represented, I think, 10% of all the films that they were showing. So financing films is not a new idea. But what I want to do is I want to provide a platform specifically geared towards filmmakers. And by doing that, I can provide advantages that generic sites like Kickstarter cannot necessarily accomplish. So there's three pieces that bring us together. The first is imagination. Imagination being the budding filmmaker sitting in their house, sitting in their room, that has an idea about a movie that they want to make, but either they just don't know how to do it, they don't have the equipment to do it, they don't have a camera, they don't have the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide them a way to put their ideas online and let people fund that idea so that they have the funds and resources necessary to make it happen. So one way that we can make this better than I mean, something like Kickstarter with a generic template. We can create templates specifically geared towards budding filmmakers. So we can do things, uh, you're all familiar with if you've made a LinkedIn profile, as you kind of add things to it, your profile gets a percentage complete. You put your resume up, it's 70% complete. Add references, it's 80% complete. We can do something similar for filmmakers. We can say, hey, these are the items you need to be successfully funded. Because not all of them will be. Some ideas just aren't that good. But if you have certain elements, you're more likely to make it happen. So by doing that, we give them a platform to get their ideas out in the open so that people can actually uh, see them and actually contribute to them. The second piece is the funding, which is the cornerstone, which is when people see these ideas, they need to be able to provide the money, provide the resources to that filmmaker so they can make it happen. Now the way these crowdfinancing sites work and the way that Kickstarter works and the way that there's a number of other sites that work is this is different than angel investing, than VC, is in that you're not buying equity. You are just providing money in good faith that you're going to enjoy the product that you're producing. <coughs> what the filmmakers do to compensate is they can provide incentives for certain amounts of funding. That's not necessarily equity. Um, some, like, some things are as simple as just a phone call. Some things are kind of silly, like I'll teach you how to dance. Some things could be a thank you video. Um, one I saw when I was just kind of browsing through their sites is I will break a pinata in your honor and send you the video. <laughs> so it can be as creative or silly as you want, and they can vary on funding levels. For $10, it might just be a thank you note. For $1,000, it could be something more personal. So as the donations increase, the potential rewards also increase. Um, but they can also backfire too. There was one really successful one that I saw that was funny because they promised a thank you phone call for like a $10 donation. 
he got $3,500 $10 donations and had to make 3,500 phone calls thanking every individual person for his, uh, for their contributions. So success, you know, you have to gauge your rewards with the success that you plan on getting from the people who are funding it. So that's the funding. And then this kind of is where the traditional sites stop. You, you present your idea and somebody funds it. What I want to do is I want to bring it full circle. And in the bring it back to Rockers, we'll find called reflection. Um, just to cue the audience. But the um, the idea is that after funding, we're also going to provide hosting services for the movies that they produced. So think of it kind of at a base level, kind of like a Netflix watch extent. You're going to have all these independently made films that were funded by the website that people can come back and watch and rate, which provides them the opportunity to reflect on the performance of what they've done and then bring it back full circle. They can do it again. So what we're doing is we're, is we're building a community around filmmaking and one that can hopefully be on itself creating not only uh, new filmmakers but also creating um, you know, professional funders, people who have, or even from a reflection standpoint, people who have really good comments and can give you really good feedback about the movies that you've created. So that's the gist of the business. So, cost. Um, the really cool thing about websites these days is starting websites is insanely cheap. Um, <clears throat> Amazon Web Services was touched on earlier, and that is kind of the basis that I would start with for starting this website. Uh, Amazon actually provides free web services for a very limited server for up to a year um, while you can you know, while you're getting things started. So essentially, I could have a website up and running um, as a proof of concept for free. Um, developing the website, I'm a software developer, so luckily I can do that myself. <laughs> so there's really no cost there except, except for the opportunity cost of my time, creating the time for myself to do it, which would be significant, but to make it happen, I could make that happen. Jeff, how many hours do you think? Um, total for the whole website? Oh, we're talking thousands, probably. Um, I was thinking, and as a general timeline, um, it would be somewhere in the four to six month range to get something, uh, a prototype up uh, in general. So, and then the final piece of the, um, um, is storage, which um, for something like this, there's a lot of storage. You know, video takes up a lot of space, and that's not something I can get for free. But luckily, storage is also very cheap. Um, assuming that the average movie is about an hour and a half. HD quality is about a gigabyte a second, depending on uh, certain variables. But on Amazon, in the first tier, which is the most expensive tier, and it actually the price per gigabyte goes down as you get more, it only costs about $2 to host a movie for a year, per year. And then it would cost me about $0.18 cents to stream that movie to somebody. So the actual costs per movie are very, very low. So the next part would be revenue. How do I make money off of this? So the biggest cash flow and the obvious revenue source is the funding that comes through. Um, I checked some of the different sites, and it seems like the status quo is most of them take about 5% off the funded amounts for any particular film or any particular project. Um, in my case, it would all be films. So with a 5% rank off the top of those, I would need about, um, like about 200000 in funding. Um, to cover all of my hosting costs, to cover just kind of the cost of running the business in general. Um, I would have to, uh, and just on this fund, on, on that revenue source alone, if I were to fund $2 million worth of film, that would make me my first million dollars in revenue, not necessarily in profit. Because as those things scale, obviously the hosting costs go up with it. Two million in revenue wouldn't make a million in profit. Two million in revenue. Sorry, not two million. Like hundred thousand. I guess I said two. Did I say? Sorry, two twenty million. Sorry. That's okay. Um, and then the, the other part of the revenue piece that um, is um, that is associated with the third piece of the circle, which is the watching, is I'm going as I want to try a different approach to watching movies, and that is going to be uh, watching movies actually be free, and. The way I want to make money off of the movies is I want to make a pay barrier to rating the movies. 
So the concept will be a person will pay, um, and what I'm thinking now is a dollar to rate a movie. What this does is it prevents, um, it will hopefully prevent bad comments. I don't want it to be like YouTube where you get where you see like 100 comments of blah or first post and stuff like that. We don't want any of that. They're not really relevant. They probably didn't even care. Um, I want serious contributions, serious ratings to get the, uh, to get a really good idea of the quality of the film so people know what they're watching. So with that, we can have two funding sources, one just through the funding, one through the watching, and they both grow as the content grows, more people get ratings, more people come through. And like I said, it only costs 18 cents for me to sh send them the movie, so a dollar is actually 80%. One other thought I had on that, which I thought would be a really cool way to make it more attractive to filmmakers, is we could get 50% of that to the filmmaker, so that you know, as people watch their movies and rate them, they get a little proceed back and actually become the revenue source for the filmmaker as well. So that's the backside and everything else, and really, that only leads competition, which, like I mentioned, is Kickstarter. Um, there are some other kind of theme sites, but none that focus on films that I could find. There is one called Mobcaster, which focuses specifically on TV series, which actually just debuted uh, just this last month, so they're very new. Um, Rocket Hub and Yugogo artist shares for music, so I think it would be uh, really unique in its market. Um, and that's really the, the gist of the company. So for, as a <coughs> idea of how big the market is, um, with Kickstarter alone, in their first two years, they raised 50 million just in movies. So there is a market for the films, and I hope to grab a block of piece of it. So, yeah. What's the rate at Kickstarter? 85%. The lowest I saw was 4%, and then, but they have a, um, the, the, the trick with these crowd financing is, they, um, the person asking for the money sets a goal amount. So the goal might be, I need 10000 to make this film. Um, they have to hit that amount or they get nothing. And that's the way most of them work. Uh, one site lets you keep the money if you don't hit your financing goal, but they charge you a higher rate. It's like 10%, but it's only 4% if you get past it. So. You didn't mention advertising revenue from the site. Side of the side of showing you. Um, no, I wasn't really. Um, I was, I was, I'm hoping from the watching the movies, most of revenue will come from buying rate, buying the ratings, and pulling money from that. Um, the only other revenue stream that I was considering um, specifically was the idea of creating a store uh, with suggested purchases for new filmmakers. Like, this is a great first camera. You know, things that will help them get started, and maybe you know, taking a percentage off of you know product sales like that. But um, I'm really hoping not to do ads at this point. But so you're opposed to advertising? Um, on the video side, yeah, at this point. Other interested filmmakers should make trailers and then be able to advertise those trailers with successfully rated films. Yeah, and then so if you have a high rating, you get trailers. Yeah, you drive them back and then they can rate for some more. So there are um, you know, transaction fees and stuff, so um, the microtransactions pose a problem. Um, some thinking maybe rating packs of like 10 or 50 or something like that. And so you can buy 50 and watch a bunch of films and get some ratings until you run out. So, mm -hmm. on, on the revenue side, for the for the rating, it's a dollar a rate. You just mentioned packaging them for 50 of them. So mm -hmm. I presume you're thinking 50 bucks for 50 or maybe 45 or whatever. What were your thoughts about like a membership fee, a monthly membership fee? Someone doesn't even have to worry about that, but it's they're signed up, so it's every the first every month you get them for fifteen or twenty bucks. This is actually where me and I was saying my business partner, the guy that um, has helped me come up with this idea, um, differed. Um, he really wanted, he was really pushing for a monthly uh, fee, um, actually a fairly high one, because the idea is you want to attract film nerds. You really want to get people who really care about movies and the artistic process and really get that good feedback. 
Um, but I had an issue with um, that the barrier to entry just to watching them. Like these are indie films; these are people trying to get their movies watched so they can get recognition as filmmakers. I don't want to put a twenty-five, thirty dollar a month, you know, barrier to someone just watching a couple short films. You know, so I'm thinking pay at the end. The other thought was maybe like a prompt two thirds of the way in, how much would you pay to finish this movie? Kind of things like that to kind of. You know, let people get started. There's some other, you know, clever ways we can do this, but I want to make sure that they have access at least to the front end, um, just so that the filmmakers, after spending their time, um, get the opportunity for people just to see it. Because I think that's the primary goal, especially for these small filmmakers. Mm -hmm. How are you going to promote your site? Well, it's um, free to post your ideas, and um, you have the opportunity to bring out a whole lot of money. So I think there's going to be an instant attraction once you know the, the, the concept is out there. But in general, um, you know, um, searches um, for financing, anything tied to events like South by Southwest or Sundance, things like that, just to uh, there, there would have to be some branding done, brand marketing and things. The biggest film that was uh, uh, that was actually made some waves this last, it was at uh, South by Southwest, I think, raised um, $350,000 for, for a film, which was, I think, the biggest film funding from a crowdsource uh, platform uh, so far. Um, but the whole crowdsourcing industry for financing is actually growing quite fast. There was just a game that was funded for $3 million. And you think $3 million from a whole bunch of people who are not gonna get anything back, they just wanna see something happen. So the whole industry is just, um, I think, is poised to grow a whole lot. So. Thank you very much.